Chloe Van Lanshoot. How are you doing? Welcome to an actor despairs. Hi there. I'm doing well. How are you doing, Ryan? It's good. It's good to have you. It's like spring slash summer is in the yeah. air, you know? So I feel like that winter's behind us and there's something that kind of, it does something great to the brain when you know you got nothing but warm weather to look forward to. Totally. And there's like a distinct smell to it too. Like I was like, smells like spring today. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Yeah. Totally. I don't know where you are, but it's it's 75 here. It is 23 degrees Celsius because we're in Canada. All right. I totally. don't know Fahrenheit, but I think that's That warm. sounds warm. Yeah. yeah. Warm-ish. Totally. Yeah. Well, I'm so excited to talk to you. You know, you got the awesome show from, and I saw your short title. Yeah. But uh, before we dig in, we usually start at the beginning. So where did you grow up? Uh. I grew up in a small town called Grimsby, Ontario, which is about half an hour away from Niagara Falls. Oh, okay. Um, like in, yeah, so I grew up going to the falls a lot. Uh, it's the biggest tourist trap in the entire world. So Is um, it? Is so that true? Fun. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. It, it was, it's actually been recently, I read an article, it's been recently listed as the actual biggest tourist trap in the world. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I've yeah, only been so, once, but I was on the New York yeah. side, and it was kind of disappointing. Right. I hear the yeah, good, it's the, good, yeah, yeah. It's a little better on the Canadian side for sure, but yes, no, it's a uh, it's full of terrible restaurants and crowded gift shops. But yeah, yeah it's nice to look at for sure, for sure. But I so, laughed when I saw that. How far outside of Toronto then is that for you? Like an hour. Okay. An hour. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I grew up there and went to dance school um, in like around Niagara Falls area. Was that um, something well, that like talk to me? Were you were your parents artists? Yeah. How did dance come together? Yeah, uh, my dad is definitely like an un an un uh, what's the word unlabeled artist. He doesn't call himself an artist, but I think he is. He's a high end cabinet maker, and he can he's a wizard. That man can create anything you can dream up yeah um he's never identified as one but i was like dude you are an artist and you're kooky so you're an artist <laughs> um yeah and my mom's got artist instincts too she's really she's got a really good ear and can pick up any song and know what the song is like she listens to the song on the radio and she knows it oh so she's very and musical yeah you're a super musical woman yeah and has an insane knowledge of music too it's quite something uh, she, she's a pharmacy technician, actually. So it's interesting because, yeah, I, I I kind of found myself into healthcare and the arts. So I guess I am some product, some sort of product in my parents, for sure. The two yeah. worlds kind of coming together. Uh, yeah, I was always like a pretty active, mobile kid, uh, like kind of from like age seven onwards. And I really like dancing. I was really, really bad at following instructions. <laughs> like I, I was never I allowed... That. But, like, not because I was a shit. I mean, yeah, I was a shithead. But, like, it was just because I had all these impulses and I just wanted to move around all the time. And, I don't know, there's a different rhythm in my head always. And it drove my dance teachers nuts. Um, but they were also, I think, lightly charmed by it in a way, too. So I, I was never allowed in the group numbers, but I could very rarely allowed in the group numbers. If so, at the back where no one can see me, which is fine. Um, but they would give me a solo, which is fun. <laughs> So I got what, to have solos. <laughs> what kind of dance did you start in? Like ballet or? Yeah, I did. Yeah, ballet, jazz, uh, tap for a bit. Kind of like the 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 whole gambit of it all. And then I found myself leaning a lot more into kind of contemporary dance and stuff because I found it a lot a lot more freeing in terms of movement and uh, choreography. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah, so it, yeah, dance. I was never a really good dancer technically but i yeah had a lot of soul and is entertaining i guess but i was always just yeah kind of <laughs> on my own planet with it uh yeah i never necessarily saw a career in it but i loved it so much and it's such a part of who i am and how i communicate with the world as well yeah so i kept it up uh while in high school and when i went to university i was on the dance team there while i was going to nursing school and yeah, so being an artist and a performer has kind of always been a fluid part of, of who I am and how I've navigated. Did you ever experiment with acting at any point? 
Yeah, I did. Uh, I started off kind of doing like the commercial modeling thing when I was about 13. Oh, yeah. I did uh, the same thing. Yeah. 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 Kind of did that and did some commercials and stuff. Um, I wanted to do it a little earlier on, but my mom was like, my mom wanted to wait till I was a bit older before doing that. So, yeah, she she would drive me to Toronto for auditions and stuff like that. Um, did you ever go in for legit? Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but like <laughs> any t TV shows, like wasn't, you know, Smallville no. and they're all the CW <laughs> stuff, you know? No, not at that time. That that came a lot later. It was mostly just commercial, kind of commercial okay. work and, and, and stuff like that. And then uh, I kind of put it on the back door for a bit when I went to university because I, yeah, I, I really wanted to, to study. And I always had like a weird little science brain. So I originally wanted to go to med school and then quickly realized, I was like, I don't want that commitment for the next 15 years. So yeah, nursing, so my dad's uh, a doctor. It's such a long journey and kudos yeah, to you for you, doing the nursing. I mean, even it's such a, <laughs> it's, I, I have so much respect for that. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, and it just, fit, I felt like more like the right fit. I kind of wanted to get going in terms of my working life right away. And just the, the role of a nurse was a little more aligned with who I was versus the doctor too. So I switched into nursing after my first year of university and it's one of the best decisions I ever made. Um, and yeah, I, I started doing student films and kind of caught the acting bug that way. Uh, during college? Yeah, yeah, oh, during cool. university. And, and then I went back to doing the modeling thing for a bit and I was doing some sort of spec shoot for Hyundai. And the, the guy who's doing the boom op, uh, he's like, hey, we're a part of this, I'm a part of this indie film. I think you should audition. It was called Jackie Boy. So I auditioned and got the part. And that was kind of my first foyer into like proper film and television. And then I was like, oh, I really, really like this. Uh, I'm going to keep doing this, but I'm also going to finish nursing. Yeah. So I finished my degree and then I started training professionally as now or started taking class at least the exact same time I started nursing professionally which was interesting how did you and balance I, I, both of those uh I mean nursing scheduling is really interesting because you'll work like kind of two days two nights and then you'll have like five days off wow. so I miss class here and there but the way the scheduling worked like I could either take class right after a shift or right before a shift it kind of all it, it weirdly worked out uh and then, yeah, I started to really notice how much of a release class was for me. I I quickly realized I'm a deeply sensitive human. And I started my career off as a nurse in Emerge. So it's just pure chaos there. You're absorbing a lot of insanity and responsibility yeah. at a really high rate. And then you kind of just got to put it somewhere. And yeah acting and class became this space for me to really just get it all out but i was such a mess man it was just like it's so like heavy limbs and arms and feelings everywhere and yeah. my teacher at the time was just like what do we do with you yeah <laughs> but you like you like so, them the teacher yeah yeah louis bomander was kind of the, the first person in my in my acting journey to be like you're a mess, but like, there's something here. So let's yeah. just keep, let's just keep, let's just shape this a bit more. So I believed him and I kept with it for a while and, um, and kept, kept doing both and just kind of figuring out who I was, what it meant to me. And then I landed, uh, the lead in, uh, like a super low budget film that was shooting in Cuba. And at the time, I thought it was going to be the role that just like changes everything, and it it, it really didn't. It was a, it was kind of a, an insanely weird experience. I like quit my nursing job. I it was just a lot of decision making at age twenty one that <laughs> was very impulsive, and ultimately, I'm glad I did it. But it definitely wasn't the life changing movie, and I came home from shooting that. And didn't have a nursing job anymore. <laughs> wow. Didn't have a place to live in Toronto. I had a boyfriend at the time that I broke up with. I just like ended it all and was like, we're doing it. And then, yeah, I came home. The film went nowhere. 
And uh, what was I the film called? It was called Skin, and yeah, okay. it was just it was uh, a whole other thing. So how and did I don't you... think it's. Uh, oh, sorry. You could, uh, I was gonna say, how did you buoy yourself during that time? That's a lot of transitions. Uh, I just kind of went for it. I didn't think too much. And had I done a little bit more thinking, I think the decision making would have been a bit different. But again, when you're 21 and you're yeah, in, impulsive and you just you're I, there's clearly something inside of me that was looking for a change too, in a way. And uh, yeah, I haven't thought about that in a really long time. It's so interesting. But yeah, I basically came home with no more job. The hospital that I worked for, they have four hospitals in Toronto. And because I left like three months in, I was like being blacklisted. Oh, <laughs> like no. I couldn't go back. And it was unfortunate because my manager at the time just like wasn't really willing to work with me. She was like, Chloe, you're not an actor, you're a nurse. And I was like, no, but I'm both. And both of these things and that's really this, belittling like, that's not cool I was man just like, yeah i was just like i only need to get rid of three shifts like can we work together here and she just wanted she she wanted nothing to do with it she thought it, i was being ridiculous she's like actors are a dime a dozen it's fine and i was like yeah. clearly this is not the workplace for me so I like yeah i think that was also part of the in, instinct to just get out of there too i was like this I'm, is not i'm sorry that happened time. to you that's horrible <laughs> I hate when people resent actors for pursuing what they love. You know, it's like this animosity. It's so unfair, you know? Yeah. And I think she was an angry woman, unhappy, deeply unhappy in her own professional life. So she saw some young. I've had many of being trying to do what she yeah. loves. Yeah. <laughs> trying to do what she loves. And she's like, absolutely not. But you know what? I don't, I'm, I'm not sorry it happened because uh, it brought everything. The journey that I went on, by quitting that place brought me to where I am now. And yeah, uh, yeah, I was forced to really take a look at, take stock of, of what I needed to do in order to pursue both my life as an, uh, an actor and also want to very much nurse still. I didn't want to just evaporate that part of me. I, I, I did really like it. I worked really hard to get there and, and I wanted it back. So I eventually found a casual position which is great because then I'm not married to a schedule I can kind of just pick and choose when I want to work versus having to have a set schedule and because there's such a shortage of nurses I could work full-time hours if I needed to to make money uh, and if I get booked on something I can just be like see you guys and then still have uh, my a position at the hospital yeah uh, so that was great. So I started working in a different department with a really, really supportive group of, of nurses who would switch shifts with me so that I could like run to an audition or like let me take a little bit longer of a lunch break so that I could like run to the other side of town to audition or like would or would like let me have the lunchroom so that I could take a Zoom, a Zoom call back. Like it was just it was crazy. So but you found I, a try. I, wanted it. I, found, I found a, a group of people who who wanted to see me succeed and I owe a lot so much to them. They're incredible. And they really believed in me and what I was trying to do. So whenever I could, I would help them out with shifts, pick up like pick up shifts for them whenever I didn't have anything going on just to kind of, to keep the, to keep, to keep that relationship going as well. And it took time. I think it was about you know four years of, of that before things started to pick up for me as an actor. There's a lot of close calls and you know, the dance and they saw, saw how discouraged I would get after just being consistently told no. Is this pre pandemic? Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This cool. is like 2000 and like 16 to 2000 and kind of end of 2019. Got it. Uh, Were you auditioning then, for both American or just Canadian shows? uh american shows that would shoot in canada got it okay and then also like canadian content and in 2019 i switched agents and that was a big change for me as well um he he really understood what i was trying to do and was really supportive of, of the fact that i was both an actor and a nurse that i didn't have to choose that yeah these two things are parts of me and i 
and they feed each other. I am not one without the other. They are, they are constantly in flow. And he really understood that about me. And he really started to shape uh, how, like the perception of casting directors as well uh, around me as around the things that I was going out for too. And stuff started to shift. And then I finally booked my first kind of big role in an indie film that I'm really proud of called Loon. And it was kind of in that moment that I was like, yeah, this is what I, this is really what I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> I love this so much. And everything I've learned as a nurse served playing this character. And like, that's kind of when things really started to click. Like I always knew these parts of who I was, I needed to keep doing both, but there's something about letting that film. I was like, yes, this is it. And that was a really special experience um, because I got to play this, the, the film is about the kind of the relationship between a bipolar mother and her daughter who's trying to get into a dance school. Oh, wow. And the, yeah, the writer is also the director was also playing my mom wrote this story when she was 18 and it's actually based on her the relationship she had with her father her father was severely bipolar and she was trying to be an actor so it's basically an autobiography of her life but she wrote herself as a mother playing her father and i'm playing her basically a younger version of her uh so that was a really trippy experience to have your director writer creator also scene partner yeah. all in one go and it was amazing and she taught me so much that your life stories are your art and i didn't grow up with a bipolar parent at all i i don't have any firsthand experience with that but i'm a care like i a professional caretaker so that knowledge and those experiences of being a nurse like totally integrated themselves into playing this character playing playing a younger version of her and if I didn't have that I wouldn't have been booked that role and that's yeah. when it really clicked for me and that's when I was just like oh wow this this is amazing being an artist is amazing like this it's there's nothing like it <laughs> and, so, and sorry what, once that came out did that open some you know doors for you to other people that may have not discovered you yeah totally and it definitely gave me a new sound of confidence as well that I that I uh, I I can ask. <laughs> yeah, kind of the totally. first thing I was like, I can act. Okay, cool, great. Let's just keep on going here. And then yeah, it's just kind of the audition started to get bigger after that, and the frequency of callbacks was 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 greater. And then there was like some momentum, and then the pandemic hit. And, and talk to me about that then, you know, because like I know what it was like for me. I can yeah. only imagine what it was like for you, especially being a nurse, you know. Yeah, it was garbage. The dumpster fire, man. Uh, so film and TV shut down. And that was always my, yeah, like, whenever I'd have a crummy shift at work, I always had, like, an audition or something to look forward to or, like, energy to put it there. It was, like, totally such a symbiotic relationship. And yeah. I was like, this is great. And then it shut down. And I was like, now what? Like everybody else, now what? But I got redeployed to Emerge, back to Emerge. And I hadn't worked there since I started my career. And I was, like, not equipped for that at all. Because uh, the department that I normally work in, in day surgery, they shut down to free up beds, to free up staff. And they yeah. just sent everybody around the hospital based on where you were needed. And I was so ill-equipped to, to be down there. But I wanted to help. Like, I wanted yeah. to be useful. Um, Thank you for your service. And I just, <laughs> um, I just didn't know quite what to do. But you just go into survival mode, I guess. And... Um, Everybody who normally who also works down there was in some sort of survival mode as well. They didn't really have a lot of patience for these people who got redeployed, rightfully so. They're like, well, now we got to babysit these nurses yeah. who don't know their way around here. And I'm just trying to keep my head afloat, not knowing what the hell is going on ever. And it was just like relentless every single day. You just didn't really know what fire you were going to walk into. It was, yeah. it was constant. And without any, without that creative outlet or that space to like share or 
it was just it yeah it weighed you down um and there was something just super isolating about it too because i think the joy is part of the profession and what i love about it so much and why i keep it so near and dear to me is the rapport that you develop with 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 your patients it's super special and totally. yeah being to take to, to be a part of to be a part of that and like the humor and the heartbreak and the insanity that comes with that it's 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 fascinating and it's such a canvas too in a way uh as a creator um but during the pandemic you were told to spend as little time with your patients as possible like to, to just to decrease that that interaction just for just to prevent the likelihood of spread and stuff like that so so counterintuitive oh, to the no. entire profession and it's at that time when these when these covid positive patients are already feeling so isolated like that's when they need that rapport the most but yeah. we weren't able to give that and coupled with just like nobody ever really knowing what was going on it was just yeah it was its own hellscape i remember but, it so well god i'm so sorry and thank you for being there for them you know i mean it's such a it's such an amazing thing that you did i mean it it i've it yeah, it was it was so, quite something to be a part of it. But I, I often like think about those who are still working in it. Like I got a break from it. I got to go and shoot a show and live out my dream. Yeah. And I just yeah, I actively am in deep reflection about how my colleagues are still there working, doing it. And it's harder now more than ever because there's such a critical staff shortage. Yeah. Uh, because everybody left. And I mean, yeah, we've we've gotten to a place where things have leveled out a bit, but people have no idea the shitstorm that is a hospital right now, yeah. the staffing crisis that exists, the mental health issues among healthcare professionals. It's just absolutely rampant. So, yeah, I mean, I think I, I when I booked from, I basically got plucked out of there. Well, both before that. from, can we can we talk about title? Which came first? From came first. Okay, so fun yeah. came first. Yeah. Fun so how did first. how did that audition come your way? Oh man. Well, so it was in March of 2021, I think. I just broke like I just broken up with my girlfriend at the time too cuz we were just having so many problems. I couldn't communicate properly. I had literally gone elsewhere. I had disappeared into some vast deep de dark depression. I didn't know who I was and yeah. I didn't know how to communicate with her, so it just fizzled out and is yeah, I was devastated, but it happened. And then literally the next day I get an, uh, the auditions were from, I read self -tape? it. And I'm like, yeah. So no, it was a zoom. It was a zoom. Wow, nice. I got the email from, got the email from an agent. Hey, you have a zoom for the show next week. And I just look at it. I read it. I was like, Oh, American show shooting in Canada series regular. I've done this dance before. They're going to hire a bunch of American actors. They're just auditioning me yeah. because they have to. To see Canadians. Like I literally yeah. Like, yeah. But yeah. I was like, but then I read the size and I was like, holy shit, man. I've literally been a part of, yeah. of these situations before as a healthcare worker. And yeah, Christy's a third year med student. So there's a part of it that's like, I'm definitely, I definitely feel correct for this, but I'm also, I got to keep it real here. Oh, and I'm also super depressed. So whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I just, I was so unattached to it in a way because there was just so much, so, so much, so much else going, going on. on. Yeah. And that's exactly why I booked it. I yeah. think we get, so, it's like when you don't attach yourself to the outcome of it is when it happens for you. It's always present. like that. You're real. Yeah. You're there. They're like, aha, there's someone who doesn't want it, but. The desperation <laughs> that, like, we all have, it, it goes just, away. Yeah. It didn't, ex I mean, it started to creep in once I got, like, the callback. I still didn't quite believe it at the time. I was like, what? What do you mean? And then they're like, yeah, you have a network test. I was like, wait, what? what's that? I didn't even know what a network test was. I had to look it up, talk to the agent. Like, I've never had a network test before. And usually, I guess, they fly you to L.A. It's a whole thing. Yeah, like, sit pandemic. with everybody else. So yeah. network test. You sign the contract where they're like, here's all the money you're going to make. And here's the three other people who you're up against. But that wasn't the case. I did it from my living room. And I was like, welcome to my bed sheet. Like, <laughs> or Zoom. Amazing. That was my network test. 
Yeah. And it was super relaxed. I think I had just come off a night shift. I was just like in flow with it, I guess. I think, I think at that point I just felt like she lived so deep inside of me, this character. I was like, I just gotta show up. That's it. Yeah. Show up. That's it. So I did. Showed up. We did the network test. Jack Bender, who the director was on there. Who else? The producers. I think at the time it was it was Epics who who the network was. And it was just fast. And then I remember calling my agent after and being like, I think I bombed it. Like they booked me for 30 minutes and it was only seven minutes long. Like I thought it was over, but I was like, okay. Like I thought it was genuinely over because uh, they had booked so much time and I was so new to this. I thought you were going to be working it like crazy and, you know, just so that they could feel confident in their decision. But it was like, okay sure sounds good and then the next day they're like the part i was like and i lost my mind (laughs) that must have been the coolest day you're like yeah full crazy like full body crazy like i think i was like my friend has a video of it i just went insane i was like rolling around on the ground i was just like what (laughs) yeah is this real (laughs) i'm so proud that's awesome it's crazy it was crazy the is super surreal uh and, and it's such how, a lesson sorry no you finish oh you, no yeah uh, no it's just such a lesson in like man we get so the part is yours when the part is yours yeah you know it is yours when it is yours and it is no one else's when it is yours like i think and this was one of those interesting times where i was like ah okay yeah correct and so yeah. then how long between that final uh, network test to when you started filming? Yeah, so they kept pushing it because of COVID. Yeah, the uh, protocols. They shut the borders. So we, yeah, we shoot in Nova Scotia, and they had shut the borders down in Nova Scotia like two weeks before we were supposed to start shooting. So it got pushed about. We were supposed to start in May. I got the call. I think end of April. We were supposed to start basically the next week. Like they were like pack your bags, ready get ready to relocate. Um, at the time, I had kind of given a forewarning that this might be in the imminent future for me to my boss. Yeah, uh, and so supportive. Again, so glad that I had that experience early on that forced me to get that forced myself to quit so that I could end up in this supportive environment. Totally. <laughs> um, of staff, and they were like power to you best of luck see you when you're back there's shifts for you when you get back (laughs) um and then we got delayed so i was like okay i went back to the hospital and i picked up a few more shifts so i was like okay well i got nothing else to do for a couple weeks so we'll go back it's still a hellhole here so i'll come back and help (laughs) and uh yeah so it was about three three to four weeks i think and then we got to nova scotia when they opened the borders up and uh, they only opened the borders up because this production had some sort of loophole in it, I think, that uh-huh. they managed to get us across. I don't, I can't really remember the details, but we had to isolate for two weeks uh, by ourselves in Halifax before we could start shooting. So that was an, an int- really interesting time for me because I was by myself alone with my thoughts for two weeks after oh. after the past two years. And I was just, unwell <laughs> but oh. it was good i needed i needed to sit i needed yeah. to sit in my shit i needed to process i needed to i needed to do to do all of that there's nowhere to run away to so it was really hard that i that two weeks were really hard but really necessary and i'm glad that they happened because i really had to sit for the first time in yeah. a while and um it probably yeah, helped the, it, the role you know the heaviness to her totally and it also yeah. It also gave me this um, confidence in a way to really approach the 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 team uh, of who I was and where I was coming from in a way. And at the time, they didn't know I was a healthcare worker. They found that out later. And there was some stuff in the first couple episodes that was just medically not quite correct. And had I had not had that 
two weeks to just sit by myself, I think I would have just, I think I would have just done it because I would have been too afraid to change it because it was my first big show. I would have just been like, whatever you want. But I think sitting, going through it, processing, it was like, no, I'm coming from where I'm at and I got to present to them who I am because they hired me and this is who I am and this is how things are done. And they were so, I didn't know how they were going to react, but they were so, yeah, gracious. They're like, oh my gosh, yes, of course. Tell us how these medical things are done. Tell us how you would actually save Ethan's leg in the RV. Like, how would that actually go down? Yeah. And they totally rewrote all of that. And that felt amazing to be seen and heard and collaborated with. And it was also cool because at the time they... They had Christy, I think, was engaged to a man. And they hired me. And I'm like, I'm queer. I'm brittily heartbroken by my ex-girlfriend. And uh, Christy's queer. (laughs) And they're like, she's queer. (laughs) Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It was like that time. You took charge. That time to sit allowed that to breathe. Allowed that moment. That, yeah, allowed myself to give myself permission to take charge. But. So I'm yeah. As hard as it was to sit for two weeks, I'm I'm grateful for it because now there's so much more of me and Christy because of that. And then how was it shooting all ten episodes? How long of a shoot did you guys have? It was almost it was like five and a half months. It was long. Wow. And I think I came into it thinking I was going to be busy all the time. Uh, I was like series regular, like yeah. I'm going to be busy every day, and like I had been on that um, type of workflow being like nursing full time for the past two years like I was just I was like ready to work 12 hours a day I was like let's do this I was like and then it was like you'd work like once or twice every couple weeks and I was like wait what is this workflow so thrown off so confused because it's a huge ensemble yeah it's an ensemble piece totally 15 of us so like you're not going to be working every day yeah so it was amazing to shoot i love being on set yeah the downtime was really hard you really had to figure out how you were going to fill your time in because uh, there was a lot of it there's a lot of time to fill in. and again all the cast was basically plucked from their homes and all relocated to halifax no one was from there so we had all that in common at least so the cat as by was as a result the cast got really close because we kind of we had each other we didn't know anybody else in Halifax. So that was really special. And I think it created this camaraderie in uh, between all of the, the actors that want to make a really great show too. And it's interesting because uh, the show itself is about a bunch of people stuck. In yeah. It only in enhances it. Can't totally, leave. And then yeah. I think it just, it was all, we were all living it at the same time. And I think that's what makes the show so special is there's just like, there's this, there's this like wire running through everybody all the time because on their off days, it's still running through them because uh, there's not really anywhere to escape to. Uh, but yeah, so I guess to your to your question, that's kind of how the title came up because I had all of this downtime and was jonesing to create or like put this energy somewhere. And when I was nursing, I started making all these like weird little dance videos when I'd come home from a shift. Um, as a way to like figure out what the hell I was feeling. Cause it was just a lot of new feelings and a lot of <laughs> confusion and not a lot of words, but they were just for me. They were just for me as an exercise. Didn't think anything of them. And then when I booked from, I brought my scrub, my hospital scrubs with me. Cause I was like, I think I'm going to make something. <laughs> nice. I had a feeling I was going to make something. I just had an instinct. And then uh, I kind of came up with the concept during my downtime, but, I made it, I, I just got in my head that you need a huge crew and all this money to make a short film. And then uh, a dear friend of mine who has a great camera was like, let's just go shoot it, okay? This thing lives inside of you. You don't need to have anything written. Let's just go. And I was like, you're right. Let's just, I mean, if you're down to fuck around, I'm down to fuck around. I'm like, low and stakes. All in Nova Scotia? All in Nova Scotia. On, so beautiful, the cinematography. I love it. It's awesome. Thank you. Charlie's amazing. Yeah. And then my, a friend of mine, Neve Wilson, who co-directed. So I was like, I need someone to watch the monitor while I'm 
I don't know, doing whatever I was doing. Yeah. And she's a she's a great actor and a, a dancer as well. So we kind of spoke the same the same language. So that was helpful. Uh, but yeah, we just made that film literally on instincts. I had an idea. I know how I knew how I wanted to start and how I wanted it to end, but how we were going to get there. I was like, let's figure it out, everyone. That's the best thing about DIY it's shorts, you know? Yeah. I was like, and it was the most creatively fulfilled I think I've ever felt because it was just, it was, it was for me. <laughs> I didn't, it was mine. So it was it ours, sounds but like, it was like my story. It was the best five and a half months, you, you know, creatively one could ever hope for. Yeah, it was, it was, it opened my eyes and my heart up to like a whole other world of what it means to be an artist and yeah to have that to be sort of to be part of such a like a big a big show and to have that kind of responsibility but be met with such grace and collaboration and uh integrity uh for story from the writers and from the director and from my other actors was really special like everyone's egos were mostly at the door and we all just wanted to make a really good show and yeah everybody would listen like there was not a single time where i'd come to something with john or jack and they would not listen they were always listening it and shows. writing and, and consider and, and considering and we had such a we such it's amazing to be on a show where you have such agency over your character yeah in a way you don't really get that ever often. almost so that really, yeah yeah super special and so, yeah, as you were shooting it, did you guys like know season two was going to happen or there was a question mark about it or. Uh, I think they I think their spidey senses were on like they kept kind of being like, we'll be back, we'll be back. But I mean, people say that all the time and then yeah. stuff can get canceled. Like you don't really have a lot of um, control over it as much as you'd like to think. Um, but so when we got picked up, we were like, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone so, was really excited. I mean, we had a feeling, but you, again, you can't be sure. Anything can happen in, in this town. Yeah. 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 And so, totally. so then how hard was the transition when, when you guys finished shooting? Uh, season one. Yeah. Uh, really hard. I had a hard, I had a really hard time. Uh, I went back to the hospital because Omicron had just hit. Oh, and so that I was, was right. Like, oh, yeah. I got to go back. I got to go back. Like my brain was just like, oh, no, dude, go back. There, no, I couldn't. Like, no, it was awful. I had spent six months taking off all of that armor to be available as an actor and to, to to do that type of work. I just, I didn't have the stamina for yeah. it anymore. I didn't have the the specific type of armor that you need in order to be both compassionate and also protect yourself. Um, so I try, I tried, I tried really hard because I wanted to feel useful in a way. It was, it was my own shit too. It was like, well, I, I want to feel useful and purposeful. And it was like, I just got off of shooting a show, living out my dream. And yeah. I, this is like what I got to do. I got to go back to work. Like it was my own narrative that I was painting in my head because I felt guilty for leaving like it was this whole thing that was coming up for me um so yeah again I tried I tried for a bit and I was just like I I can't I can't do this anymore like yeah. and that was really that was a really hard thing to reflect because it's always been something that I've done and to recognize that I can't do both right now. Um, yeah, felt really um, limiting, I guess. And um, yeah, like a weird shame around it. Don't be. Um, You've done no, so much. I, yeah, I, I've yeah. worked through it. Yeah. But like it was just that's, that was what was happening. Yeah. Uh, I spent so long too, like incredible healthcare workers who are still there yeah working so hard not being seen not being heard at all and all i wanted to do was like help in some capacity but where i was at was not helpful for me or for them really either so i had stayed in touch with uh, a, 
uh, my preceptor who trained me in Emerge. Her name's Marina, and she's an incredible nurse. She's a nurse practitioner now, but she's also a visual artist. And her and I, when when uh, she was training me, we'd always talk about art and how and creating and performing and how it's just like such a safe space and such a, a wonderful thing to have uh, to process the insanity that is healthcare work. Uh, so we got back in touch and uh, we started talking again and we came up with this idea of uh, holding space for healthcare workers who are artists. I was like, I was like, Rena, I don't think we're unique in this. I think there's actually probably quite a bit of healthcare workers who have some art that they want to share. And I know for me, creating title was like the most therapeutic done. I could have most therapeutic thing I could have ever done for myself Yeah. Uh, in terms of processing what I navigated nursing. And uh, no amount of therapy could could serve what making that film did did for me. And uh, so we came up with this concept, Collective Hearts. Uh, we put a call out to all the hospitals looking for healthcare workers who have some sort of art that they want to share. And the response was absolutely overwhelming. Uh, it was incredible. Like it was just like there was hundreds of healthcare workers who are also artists in the GTA, yeah. like the greater Toronto area alone. So we put together a show. Um, we had like over 350 people attend, 50 healthcare worker artists uh, who got to showcase their work. Everything from visual art to there was a whole band full of eMERGE doctors and nurses. There was a wow. jazz band full of, full of healthcare workers, spoken word, um, comedy. Someone did a monologue. I showed title. Someone did a dance film. All healthcare workers. And it was like the most joyous night of my life, I think, because it was the first time I saw that many healthcare workers smile yeah. and have joy because they were like finally being seen and heard in a way that they've been screaming at for the government for, for years. Yeah. So it's just like, wow, like art heals, creation heals, holding space heals. And I think if we want to un start to repair some of the damage that has been done to our healthcare worker force. Like it, it, it comes from holding space for expression. That's <laughs> and beautiful. so to be able to, I think for me, it was a big turning point of, of tethering who I am as a nurse and who I am as an artist to this. And this is how I can be of service in a way. I don't have to go back to the bedside to, to, prove my worth as a as a nurse i can i can do it in this other way that integrates all of who i am to help create space for and and create space and and, and yeah and and inform that other healthcare workers can do this too that's so radical can create can share yeah so yeah it was a big the transition was a big, it was a big time. <laughs> but you accomplished a lot, and that's that's amazing. And and so then you you set up this workshop. You obviously did film festivals with title. It seems. Yeah. And then. Yeah. How long until you found out that season two was going to happen? Uh so we found out April. I think it was like end of April of, of last last year. Yeah. It's almost exactly a year uh, ago. Yeah. 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 Exactly. A year ago, and then we, and then we went back to, and started shooting, in beginning of July. Wow, that's awesome! Yeah. And, now, and now you got season two about to come out. How does that feel? Yeah, crazy, wild. I'm all nervous. It's a big season. There's a lot going on. So I hear. Yeah, I'm excited yeah. for you. <laughs> yeah, there's a. It's a wild. It's a wild season. I think season one really established the the world and really invited the audience into the day-to-day -day of, of these people and what happens when things go wrong and yeah. how everyone's kind of mechanisms for survival. And then season two just like ramps it up like 300%. It's, it's wild. And just when you think like everyone's reached their limit, like something else happens. And it, yeah, it reminds me a lot of like early pandemic days <laughs> Wow, I, <laughs> at I, the I... hospital. It's just like once you didn't think it could get any crazier and then it does. And you're just like, Oh, this is television, but it's also a reflection, a reflection of everyone's reality at one point. Yeah. So yeah, it's 
test. It's a it, season two is an interesting example of yeah what it takes to try to be resilient and also what it takes to what happens when you when you fall. Well, I and think that both I, are human and we, real. And, we, really need pieces like this right now. So that's amazing. And uh, mm -hmm. I can't wait to see your performance in it and congratulations on it. Thank you. Yeah. It's been a, yeah, it's been a crazy ride. Lots of learning. Endless well, learning. Yeah. You've done so much and I'm just so proud of you for being so positive <laughs> and creating space for yourself and others. I mean, you're really altruistic and that's so rare, you know, especially for actors, you know, we, many people, they become so self-consumed. It's people forget to give back, which is what I try to do with this. And I'm, I'm so grateful that you shared your story. Thanks. It's, it's like funny you say it's altruistic. I appreciate that. Thank you. But I get like the need. I mean, it's interesting is the, the need for creating that space, like came from a need that I needed. Yeah. And it's like, I don't, I don't know. I, and I think it's such a lesson in humanity and how humans operate. Oh, this is my parents' cat, Milo. Oh, hi, Milo. <laughs> He's climbing everywhere. Okay. We'll That's see you amazing. later. Well, um, I, I'm curious, you know, because obviously we, we have people that are, you know, frontline workers listening and we have people that are actors and, and it sounds like you've dealt with, a lot of trauma and come through it stronger. And for both those that are, you know, in, in nursing or in medical fields and both those that are, you know, just out there struggling with their own traumas, mm -hmm. any word, and this is a heavy question, I apologize, but any words of wisdom you might have for those currently going through it? Uh, words of wisdom. I don't know if they're wise words, but yeah, I think really get curious about, where all of that sits in you and I think that's what happens for me when I finally had some space to sit as I started to pay attention to where all of that was lying and I mean the amazing thing about acting is it forces you constantly to figure that out uh, and it forces you to look inward all the time but for those who aren't acting but get, get curious about where those things sit start to play around with with how to express that and how to share that. You don't necessarily have to share it with others, but figure out a way to, to, to find a way to express it because I think it's energy that we put away yeah. and it lives, it lives somewhere in there and it's going to stay there and bother you if you don't figure out a way how to trans transform it into something else. And I think that's where the power of art and creation and expression and sharing is so powerful and so universal. Um, and I think that's my advice. I encourage you to get curious of, of where that sits and how you can express it. And, and don't, don't get too caught up in an outcome of what it is you're trying to tell. Just, just kind of start to let it release itself. That's beautiful. Thank safely. you for sharing that. Yeah. And final question, you know, obviously I know you got season two, but can you announce anything mm -hmm. else you might have coming up? Or you want to share? Yeah, uh, yeah. Season two is a big one. Uh, we have another for those who uh, are in the Toronto area. We're doing another Collective Hearts show May twenty fifth. Um, How do people check that out or find out about that? Yeah, you could go on our Instagram, Collective Hearts, uh, H A R T S. Uh, we we're selling tickets in a couple weeks. We'll have about forty healthcare workers who are also artists uh, sh showcasing their work. So. It'll be a very special time. And yeah, that's kind of the big one. Uh, title will be showing at the Beverly Hills Film Festival. Amazing. Uh, April 21st at the Chinese Theater. Please Are you going? Them. I'm going, yeah. Oh, From's doing awesome. a per Yeah, Frum's having their premiere, uh, a premiere uh, the day before. So it's perfect. <laughs> perfect Divine timing. timing. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Very divine. So Chloe, yeah. this was so cool, and I'm so proud of you. And you're crushing the thanks, game right man. now. And thanks for <laughs> for sharing and giving back and coming on and carving some time out of your day. And and I really hope we get a chance to work together one day. Totally, Ryan. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for thanks for having me on. It was, it was awesome. Well, I I always end it with saying, you know, come back anytime, and and I look forward to all that's to come for you and and to be continued. Okay. Yeah, totally, Ryan. I'll right. catch you. Much love. All right.
Cheers.